Lair of the Mounties, the story of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We present the 20th episode in Blair of the Mounties, being the second part of the story of the Canada Western Bank robbery. In the first part of our story, news of the robbery of over $100,000 in currency breaks. Two men are arrested on suspicion. Mason, the bank cashier, and old Danny McBrennan, the night watchman, an ex-member of the Mounties. Blair goes into action in defense of old Danny. As our scene opens, we find Blair and Marshall discussing the case at police barracks. But, Sergeant, do you mean to say that you have the solution to this thing? Yes, I've got the solution. And you know who did it? Yes, I know who did it. Well, but I don't follow all this. Now, have a little patience, Marshal. I've given the lead to the city police. It's their job, you see. And if my idea works out, we ought to know something in a little while. In the meantime, let's go over the whole case. Perhaps you'll see what I'm driving at. Now, uh, what happened first? And mind you, don't miss the little thing. The first thing was that Danny McBrennan, night watchman at the bank, states that at 11.05 last night, the manager, Blake Fishbury, drove up to the bank in a cab. Anything suspicious in that statement? Well, not suspicious, but unreasonable. Fishborough was proved to be out of town at that time, attending a public function where lots of prominent people saw him. And what do you conclude from that? That Danny was either lying or that he was mistaken. Or that he wasn't mistaken and wasn't lying. But, but, but that's impossible. Well, we'll pass that up for the present. What's the next item in Danny's statement? He said that the bank manager gave him a $10 bill, sent him to the Craven Hotel for some cigars. The Craven House is 12 blocks away from the bank, and it took Danny 20 minutes. Yes. Now we switch over to the statement of Mason, the cashier. He was working late in the bank. He too swears that Fishborough, the manager, came in at about five past eleven and chased him off to bed. Mason immediately went upstairs to his quarters over the bank, or so he says. It's funny that neither of these men remarked on their surprise at seeing the manager back from his trip. Bravo, Marshal, that's an important point. It brings up a possibility, but we'll pass that one too. Let's get on. What next? The next thing is that Danny gets back with the cigars and finds the manager gone. That makes him suspicious. He goes upstairs and gets Mason, the cashier. Mason spots a package of bonds that must have come out of the safe, opens the vault, and finds the currency gone. All right. The city police arrest both Danny and Mason on suspicion. What's the case against them? The case against Mason is that he knew the combination of the vault. He slept above the bank and had no alibi. In fact, he admits being there at the time. Yes. Now the case against Danny. The case against Danny looks bad. The ten dollar bill he claims the manager gave him for the cigars was one that had been put into the vault when it was closed that afternoon. It's a mixed up business. Yes, anyhow, here's Andy McCross of the city police in a deuce of a hurry. Let's hear what he has to say. Good morning. Hello, Mac. What can I do for you? You can give me an explanation. The whole city's swarming with mounties checking up on the Canada Western case. Don't tell me. You better call him off or there's going to be trouble. You, me call him off? Well, I'm not running the force, Mac. No, but you're at the bottom of all this foolery. I tell you, we got that night watchman, Danny McBrennan, cold, and Mason, too. They're remanded for trial at the assizes. So I heard. Well, you see, Mac, Danny used to belong to our lot. And naturally, the boys are out to do what they can. But if you have a case against them, of course, it's all right. Now, what's wrong with the case, anyway? Better sit down, Mac. We were just talking it over. What do you think of this story that Mason and Danny told? You mean about the manager himself stealing that money and giving Danny the $10 bill for the cigar? Yes. You don't mean to tell me you believe that story? I do, Mac. Oh, the thing's ridiculous. Yes. Too ridiculous to be a lie. What do you mean? Just think it over, Mac. Mason the cashier is a pretty smart chap. If he was cooking up a story, it's funny he wouldn't think up a better one than that. I don't see anything funny in it. All right. We'll have the best lawyer in Canada to defend old Danny. Wait till he starts on that case of yours. I have an idea you'll see the joke. See here, Sergeant. Have we not always worked with you before now? Yes, I know what's coming, Mac. All good policemen should stick together. Well, eh? but no... Now, forget it, Mac. That stuff is out. We're working for Danny. I was bluffing just now when I talked about hiring a lawyer. That won't be necessary. Why not? Because I think we're going to have this case cleaned up before night. And Danny will be a free man. No, see here, Sergeant. If you have a line on anybody for this thing, I have a right to know it. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Mac. But I'm sure of it. And another thing... You've got 50 men out on this watching the roads and the trains out of the city and checking up hotels. And if you don't pull them off, there'll be a complaint into the commissioner of a noon from the mayor of the city. See here, Andy McCross. You try to pull that comic policeman stuff on me, I'll make you and your whole outfit look like 30 cents before the day's out. But hold on now. What's the trouble? The trouble is the arrest of Danny McBrennan. 
He was in the police. There's a dozen or more of us here on this station that served with Danny through the storm and the cold up in the Arctic. Danny never told a lie in his life. You've got a nerve to arrest a man like Danny. Oh, no, I begin to see. Well, don't strain yourself, Mac. Well, what is it you want, anyway? I want Danny out of that jail. Well, listen here, I cannot do that, Sergeant. They won't allow bail. It's a serious charge. I'm and... not I'm not talking about bail. Release him to our custody. We'll be responsible. If he's wanted, he'll be here. Then we'll help you on this case. Well, maybe we might fix it up for you. Better get busy and send Danny down here. I want to talk to him. I'll do my best, Sergeant. But man to man now. Could you know just give me a line on what you got on this case? Not while Danny's in jail, Mac. But I'll do this much. See this man wanted notice? Sure. We we'll have it ourselves. There's so many of them that I haven't had the time to be studying them all. Well, just take a good look at this one. It's important. Hmm. John McNaughton, alias William Grover, wanted for burglary and assault in St. Paul, Minnesota. Yes, he crossed the border illegally two days ago. He's up here, Mac. And while we're talking of him, he's the man we have all the patrols after. It's an immigration case, so you can forget about that complaint. Did you pick him up? No, we let him through. Wanted to see what he was after. Take a look at his picture, Mac. Forget the moustache. Ever seen him before? Well, no. Can't say that exactly. Know him yourself? No, but he's very like somebody I'm interested in. But what's that got to do with a Canada Western case? Never mind that now. Go and get Danny. Well, I let him out on the public order for questioning. And in the meantime, perhaps I can feel a release of custody. All right, hurry up. Look here, Sergeant. I wish you'd tell me something. What is it, Martin? Is this just a bluff, or has this man McNaughton really got anything to do with the Canada Western case? I think he's the man who got that hundred thousand dollars, Marshal. But what have you got on him? Nothing yet. Only that he uh, looks like the sort of man who would do it. What? L looks like? Oh, but look here, Sergeant. You can't pull a man for that. No, we'd want something more. But the whole basis of this crime is personal appearance. Just think a minute. Fishborough's alibi depends on that. And the story of Mason and Danny rests on the fact that the robber looked like the manager. Yes, there's something in that. Well, never mind that now. Let's go and have lunch. Danny will be here when we get back, and it's going to be a very amusing afternoon. I tell you, I have to see him. Sure didn't he send for me? Here's Danny, Sergeant. Oh, hello, Danny. Come in. How are you feeling? Well, no, Sergeant. It, it was mighty fine of you to get me out of that jail. That's all right, Danny. Oh, but listen now. It's, it, it's not over yet. And, and don't you be troubling about me. Uh, I can I can face the music, Peter. Uh, I know, Danny, but you won't have to do that. I got you out, you're going to stay out. Now, um, just answer me one question. When you searched the manager's office last night, what did you find? Oh, there was a thing out of place. But in that little room behind the office. Get this down, Marshal. Well, yes, it, it, it's a little room with a, with a sofa in it and, and, a, and a wash basin. What did you find there? Well, there was a grey suit thrown on the sofa. It's Mr. Fishbury's. Sure, I hung it up on the stand. That's all. Did you phone McCross, Marshal? Yes. I told him to ask Mr. Fishbury to go over to the city police station for an interview. He'd be there by now. All right. And what about that other thing? I fixed that up, too. Sent for Scythe and Palmer down with a warrant to arrest John McNaughton in room 47, Craven Hotel. If he was there, they should have him down to the city police headquarters by now. Good. We ought to be hearing from our friend Mac pretty soon. What can they do without any evidence, Sergeant? And we'd better be going down. McCross is expecting you. No, I'm going to stay here, Marshal. I'm interested to hear what happens when that bank manager sees McNaughton. But what about all this evidence? Hadn't we better get it into shape? Somehow I don't think we'll need it, Marsh. Not at present, anyway. If those two men come together, I believe we'll get the whole story without any questioning. Sergeant... Hello? Hello, Mac. What's wrong? Well, I never saw such a thing in my life. What? We got the bank manager down to the station, and we were strolling around waiting for you. And when the door flew open, and then boys of yours brought in McNaughton. Good. What happened? Ah, oh, come away now. You can find what happened. This fellow McNaughton's the dead spitting image of Fushborough, where there's a like as two peas. But what happened? <laughs> they flew at their throats, and when I got him apart in five minutes, we had the whole story. Listen, who is this McNaughton fella? He might be the twin brother of the other man. Not only might be, but he is. Did you get that money? Sure, we got the most of it. The boys find it down in McNaughton's room. Well, that's that. Come on, Danny, my lad. We'll go down and make out the release for you. I will not. Listen now, Wendy McCross. I'm going out for a drink with Sergeant Blair. Go away and get your dirty papers. Bring him into the office and wait till I get back. Well, whatever you say. Hold on now, Sergeant. There's just one or two things I can't get in this case. Is this McNaughton really twin brother to Fishborough? Yes, he's his brother. He tried to blackmail the manager. 
Fishborough was in trouble, so he planned that robbery. Well, what about that new $10 bill he gave Danny? Or rather, I suppose it was the brother who gave it to him. How did he get it before the safe was robbed? He got it out of the bundle that came in that day. But the teller checked the numbers. Checked them, yes. He looked at the starting and finishing numbers. I see. What's the importance of the grey suit? Oh, that wasn't important. Just the link that put me onto the plot. Fishborough took that grey suit for his brother to put on. The brother didn't use it. But when he got to the bank, he threw it out of the grip to make room for the money. Yes, it all fits in. Yes. Come on, Danny. I'll be with you, Sergeant. You have heard episode 20 in Blair of the Mounties. Tune in for the next episode in this series entitled The Goose Lake Robbery.